CHAOPS, characterizing exoplanet satellite. This joint mission by the European Space Agency and Switzerland is solely dedicated to the study of planets orbiting around bright nearby stars. After over three years of successful operation since its launch in December 2019, the CHAOPS mission has been extended for at least two more years by the European Space Agency. I was absolutely thrilled uh, to learn the news of, uh, of the extension of CHAOPS. Well, I'm very happy, of course. I was relieved to know that the extension was granted. Because it means that this, this extremely good uh, work uh, and these very exciting discoveries that we have been able to, to do for almost three years now, uh, we will be able to continue them. We invited some experts from the very heart of the CHAOPS team to understand how important the extension is and what results it could give in the future. So first of all, the fact that CHAOPS is performing uh, today as it was performing three years ago already tells you that of course it needs to continue flying because uh, it's as good as new. Uh, it hasn't done all the science that it could do. CHAOPS is a more precise instrument than many others and therefore we get to measure different things, better things than the others. Uh, CHAOPS is special in that in contrast with previous uh, space mission. Its goal is not to detect more of these exoplanets, and we know so far uh, almost 5,000 of them, but to obtain the more detailed uh, knowledge, what we call characterization, of the most interesting of these exoplanets. So CHAOPS is the very first small satellite in ESA scientific program. That was designed to characterize exoplanets. Which means to determine their nature, uh, their composition, uh, and if they have an atmosphere. So th this is what I find extraordinary in this business, to be honest, is you can say how big a planet is, you can say constrain its atmosphere, you can say all these things, but you never see the planet. We are looking at the star, what we see is that then the light we receive from the star decreases. Measuring how much this decrease is allows us to know the size of the exoplanet. Because we only observe when the planet is passing in front of its star, so if it does so every year, uh, it means that you need to wait another year to, uh, to observe it. Now, if we want to have much more data, it means that we need to extend uh, our coverage in time so that we have more opportunities to see any uh, fantastic planets coming back uh, into our, our field of view. Indeed, for three and a half years, the precision of CHAOPS has exceeded all expectations. It has allowed scientists to determine the properties of a vast number of exoplanets, some of which being particularly unusual. CHAOPS measured a planet that is not uh, spherical, but has the shape of a rugby ball because it was orbiting so close to the star that it got deformed by the tidal forces between the star and the planet. So you can detect the fact that the planet is not spherical but deformed because of the tides. I think this is again quite remarkable uh, to have enough precision to detect those things. And, and one of the highlights is clearly this system TOI-178 uh, with six planets in, in Laplace resonance. It's exactly the same as a harmony on a, on a musical score. Because these systems are fragile and they exist today, we can observe them, it means that for billions of years, a system like that has remained unperturbed. Although Kerb's main objective was the uh, characterization of exoplanets, Kerb's is a photometer, so it means that it can do all the kinds of photometric measurements. And it can also do solar system objects. Uh, as you may know, Cheops has uh, recently contributed to the discovery of the rings of uh, the dwarf planet Coar. And what was very special with this disk, it is very relatively far away from the object, uh, much further away than one thinks these disks should normally be. So, uh, as usual, uh, when you try to solve a problem, you find new ones to address. So now we have a disk, but we don't know how come this disk can exist where it is. So, you know, it opens new questions. So as we see, 
the extension of chaos is crucial for understanding the unique worlds far beyond our solar system. But what other riddles do scientists expect to solve with chaos in the future? One thing that we could expect and that would be really thrilling would be the detection of the first moon around an exoplanet, what we call an exomoon. In the solar system there are hundreds of moons around giant planets, but our Earth also has a very prominent uh, natural satellite, the moon. The signal of an exomoon uh, is very small even compared to the signal of an exoplanet. So detecting that will require a lot of observation. This is also a little deformation of the light curve that we expect to be able to see if the moon is big enough. So far we haven't seen anything, but we're trying. For Cheops, without any hint that we could find an exomoon, it will be a lot of time invested where maybe there is no return. However, there are particular candidates where we suspect there could be an exomoon and we are dedicating time to look for it. But uh, the fact that the signal is so small makes it hard. Well, exomoons and exorings and all that thing is something that is of course of interest. But it is a bit a uh, fishing expedition that you don't really know whether you're going to find it. So we have built a much more solid science program where we know we will get results. So there are many things building on what Kerbs does best, characterizing planetary systems. This is really uh, important because many of those planets in these systems become prime targets for other big space infrastructure. And that's why science is so important that we collect data and compare data and have enough data. And that's why we need more and more and more because every time you realize that what you knew before is not the complete story.